Hello everyone, my name is Maria Valdez. I am an intern in the Department of Psychiatry for the Summer Institute on Medical Ignorance at the College of Medicine in the University of Arizona. Before I bore you to death, or at least not yet, I want to tell you a story. So a few months ago I was sitting in front of my physics professor's office and I was scrolling down Facebook and I found a video of John Oliver. Automatically I was intrigued, but then I saw it was about science too, and I thought, John Oliver and science, that doesn't match up. What's going on there? But then I saw it and it all made sense. Why don't you check it out for yourself? There are now so many studies being thrown around, they can seem to contradict one another. In just the last few months, we've seen studies about coffee that claim it may reverse the effects of liver damage, uh, help prevent colon cancer, decrease the risk of uh, endometrial cancer, and increase the risk of miscarriage. Wow. Who thought John Oliver and science put together was so attractive? Oh my, sorry. So yeah, so after seeing this video, I don't know what you thought, but what I decided to was to do some research and look into it and see if science really is that controversial and stretches the truth a bit. And I found this. Yoga has been well documented to help with emotional, physical, and psychological issues. But did you know research shows yoga can actually change your DNA for the better? And drinking more coffee seems to lower the risk of diabetes. A new study showing that drinking a glass of red wine is just as good as spending an hour at the gym. What? one doesn't even sound like science. It's more like something your sassy aunt would wear on a t-shirt. I can't help but laugh at that wine one. John Oliver has a really good point. But the point I want to focus on is the question that you all may have, and that's if science is lying to us. Well, it's not lying to us, but it's not telling us all the facts. And by facts, I mean their statistics. Today, there are several statistical methods that an investigator or scientist can use to sort of alter their data. And the most common one is p-hacking and that's when you alter your p-value, and the p-value is the one that's going to tell you if your data really means something or not. So what scientists do when they're doing p-hacking is they remove all of their bad data, or the data that's not convenient to the p-value, and just leave the good data. So they alter all their variables, their population, and everything else that they're looking at to be able to get some results that are significant. So they're not lying to us, they're just stretching the truth a bit, and not telling us about the truth they're stretching. So next time, read the paper twice. Don't just look at the video. Look at the whole thing and make a whole image of what you're reading before you decide to drink a huge bottle of wine and think you did one hour of exercise, because I'm not sure if that's quite right. My final questions are, is there another method that's similar to p-hacking? Should we tell patients or write on the publications if p-hacking has been done on the data or not, and how far can statistics go till we consider it illegal?